remiss if I didn't remind you there's a lot more to a tractor show than just tractors. There's 200 ton engines running, there's airplanes for, for sale, sale and there are engines bucks. of all descriptions. Alright, this is an Allison engine out of a P-40 World War II fighter plane. Two of my instructors were P-40 instructor pilots and uh, so they were very familiar with it and General Chenault and Flying Tigers flew these of course. General Chenault had the Flying Tigers warming these every 20 minutes so they wouldn't get jumped because the only thing harder to get in China than, than an engine was a complete airplane. Now, since they were being warmed every 20 minutes, the average lifespan for them was only 100 hours before they'd have to be overhauled. But of course, we're here to buy a tractor. Now there, in a nutshell, is the whole deal. You're driving along on your Alice Chalmers, and you reach back, grab the handle, lower the plow, and you are in the farming business, my friend. Welcome back to Antique Farm Tractors 2, where I'm walking through every row of the huge Florida Flywheeler show, looking for tractors suitable for anything from gardens up to 40 acres. We'll talk a little about maintaining, not hard to do, since they're now outlasting us, the grandchildren of the original owners. All they really need is to be run. The early Matsons ran A model orchard tractors until they were really surpassed by the cases. And this is about as fine an example as it's going to get. Here's your cockpit. Some fine examples of Fords here. And I knew people who did all their grove work with nothing more than that, a flathead Ford tractor. Actually the most popular tractors in history because you got it all. A pole tractor, PTO, and hydraulics in one small package. Very nice. After the end series, Ford started numbering the tractors. Silver King. Very nice. I don't know if you did that work, but that's a great job. Yeah, it's been done about 10 years ago. 10 years ago. In a Minneapolis mow lane, this is about as good as we're going to get, I believe. Why do you have two gas tanks? Well, the smaller one is for straight gas that you warmed the tractor up with, generally a couple of gallons, and the larger one is for what's called tractor fuel, which is old paint varnish, uh, diesel fuel kerosene, plus a 50% mixture of gasoline because once they got hot, they'll run on anything, so you wanted to run on the cheap fuel. All right, even this old John Deere M has a pad to run a belt. We got our PTO. Now this bar here. This is called the tool bar. So we got a full set of hydraulics even on this one. Here's your arms going up and down. And we can put our 
Well, let's say we're going to put our uh, machinery in here. We're going to run. We're going to pull a harrow with that, so we can put it over here and and throw it this way. Put two tools right here, pins, and now we've got it locked in. And that's how your tool bars work. So you're going to need one of those. And whether it's this type or it's square or whatever, we call it a toolbar. All right, I'm walking up to this farm hall. We'll get, you got to look behind them to see what you got. Got a PTO, and we got this is exactly what I was just talking to you about. We're centered here, but we can throw that over there and take these two pins, drop them in, and. Uh, center that pole bar any way we want. What else we got here? Okay. All right, what's this business up here and all these holes? This is, a, this is just another version of a toolbar where we can attach our implements on the front of the tractor and push or with bars spreading that way we can pull various implements. Alright, and even on this tractor. We have independent brakes, clutch, hydraulic system. And let's see what we got around back. Well, you there, we got bars that lift. We have Unless you see it and I don't, I don't see a power takeoff, but we got everything else to pull stuff with. So you just have to check everything that you're going to, you can go multiple ways and no way is wrong. Nineteen thirty-seven. These were made in the hundreds of thousands under Farmall and later International, and they're quietly out serving today one of the most useful tractors ever made, just like the Ford. It'll do it all a bite at a time. Now this is International Cub. Practically everybody has done something with that at one time in their life if they're on the, on the farm. This will digest anything from your yard up to about five acres. You really, it's too big for your yard and it's too little for five acres, but it will handle them both. And I, I did five acres in the equivalent of this in the Avery line. Now, what is this? Well, you know what that is by now. You know what that is, of course, our takeoff. Uh, what else have we got? Nothing new, just very basic. Here's your clutch and your two brakes. And as you can see, if you've got the knowledge of implements and how, you know, what goes where, you can do a lot with a farm all cub or any tractor. Hard to go wrong with a Massey Ferguson. Old tractors are designed to blow a gasket before they bend metal, so you'll need a gasket or know how to make one. Cut leather or solid cardboard to the size of the part. Leave a quarter inch overlap, and you're going to use the flat side of your ball peen to tap out the shape, the rounded side to tap out bolt holes. Carefully trim. And there you have it, my friend, as fine a gasket as ever been made by the factory or grandpa himself. This is an Alice Chalmers Model G. A lot of these are being converted to electric power. And it shows you how to set up your cultivators. The left side of your screen is properly set up. The right is unadjusted. And you could buy these from Montgomery Awards. Some of the other catalog stores. 
And they were good little tractors. They were they were sturdy, well built. All right, we used to see these all the time in the groves. A very popular, very powerful tractor. They ran with six cylinder engines instead of the four bangers that the uh, cases ran with. K730, 400, uh, earlier than that, the DO. If uh, their main, the main complaint against them relative to those, and the reason so many use the case, uh, the case could do. 40 45 mile an hour in the case of a DO down the road and you didn't need a uh, truck trailer additional people to uh, to move equipment around you just did it with the tractor but this is very very fine work here that panel Row crop, Oliver. You don't see many of them anymore for some reason. running with a four banger there John Deere Model A and Model B the controls for them are very similar I'll go through it John Deere gear shift starter speed lever choke and fuel lever gauges flywheel now if this is in, out in the open you can grab that and spin it and start the tractor well we're down here at the end and what is the best advice I can give you for buying one of these tractors the best advice I can give is buy one with everything working from the get-go and it'll take care of you instead of the other way around. Keep your eye on it, though. It's going to try to outlast you, and probably will. Well, that is a fun example there. And now, again, we have setups to attach, tools, weights to keep the front end down. You know that this is a row crop tractor. Get it up high to get over the corn or whatever it is that we're 1962 and the dirty little secret with these tractors is they have far outlived the original owners and all they need to go to work is for you to get on them and work them uh, this has got everything all right we got a toolbar that we've attached to our hydraulics got plug-in hydraulics right there and they look good we've got our power takeoff uh, the handles just engage different things here to go up or down or do whatever we want to do okay All right, I don't see anything really different now this is like a case it's got a got a hefty cylinder i mean they'll, they'll really really got some power to lift things that's what you want 